guys, it's Corinne. Today we're going to make uh, spicy bread and butter pickle slices. Um, this is going to be kind of like my copycat version of the famous Dave spicy bread and butter pickles. They're not the super hot ones. They're more the mild ones. So we're going to need cucumbers. I usually get, uh, I, you're going to need at least two pounds of cucumbers per recipe. This is just what I picked from the garden. So I'll actually weigh out how many I get to kind of you know, double or triple the recipe, depending on how many pounds I get. But yeah, see how these are just a nice length. They're not too big. Um, they're not going to be too seedy. So yeah, we'll get to that here in a minute. But first, I want to tell you everything that you guys will need aside from the cucumbers. So over here, I have a scale with a um, bowl on it. And I've got my scale, you know, set back to zero. So each section of these, I'm going to need to do two pounds. So I'll show you that. Here I have my mandolin slicer. And that is set to a quarter inch thickness. So if you guys are cutting these by hand, just remember quarter inch. Um, I've got a safety glove here that comes with my mandolin slicer. I don't know if you can see that scar there right under my thumb. Um, you know, back when I was in high school, I took a big chunk of my skin out there and had it flapping there. So um, I always make sure I wear a glove with that bad boy. Over here I have a bunch of colanders. These are just Sterilite colanders that I got at Dollar General. Um, these are awesome because I'm going to slice the cucumbers, put them in a bowl and mix them with some salt and set them in the fridge for three hours. So all the excess liquid's gonna start draining off of them. And then I've got, you know, bowls under these that are just, um, they just fit the colanders, but they're still smaller. So that way all that water goes down underneath it. And that way, you know, the cucumbers aren't just sitting in there stewing in that extra water as it comes off. I've got four colanders here, but I've got three set up with bowls underneath them. So I am anticipating at least three batches out of this. I've got sugar. I've got Mrs. Wadge's Extra Crunch uh, Calcium Chloride Granules. This is super, super important if you want an extra crunchy pickle. Now... Putting them in salt and draining them for three hours is also going to take a lot of excess water in them, which will naturally just kind of give them a crunch. But this is just the absolute best. Um, it's in the ingredients on the Famous Dave pickles. So, it, you know, it's 100% natural. So, you know, you use it if you want. I use it. I love it. One thing I will say is it does take about a week for it to really do its thing and make your pickles extra crunchy. If you go ahead and can these pickles and get done with them and decide to eat them once they cool down... Um, you know, you will uh, you will find that they have a crunch to them, but they're still not going to be as crunchy as what they're going to be a week from now using this stuff. So you'll need your canning salt, all natural canning salt. Uh, make sure that it is canning salt. It's 100% iodine free. We're going to need some um, chopped onion, dehydrated chopped onion. We're going to need some dehydrated red bell peppers. We're going to need some red pepper flake. It's going to give it a little bit of that spice. We're going to need some ground turmeric. We're going to need uh, the black peppercorns. So make sure that they're black peppercorns. Same thing. That's going to give it some of that spice. Uh, then we're going to have celery seed in here. And last but not least, we're going to have our um, mustard seed. And then also we're going to have white vinegar. And then we'll have water to top it off. We're going to set it in this stock pot. This is a 10 quart stock pot. I'm not anticipating any more than three batches of this. So I know that it's going to fit in my 10 quart stock pot. Basically, we're going to dump all these ingredients in the stock pot, including the water. And we're going to let this simmer for the three hours that our pickles are going to have to be in the refrigerator with the salt and everything else. So yeah, so three hours is what this is going to have to be in the refrigerator your pickles once they get mixed with the salt to start getting rid of that excess liquid but we'll go through that here um with the next step so anyway so we're going to take our pickles or our cucumbers and basically on a cucumber you have the stem end um yeah so the stem end and you have the blossom end we're going to make sure that we cut off that blossom end because that is also something that'll make your pickle extra mushy is having that blossom end basically you know that blossom end just makes it mushy it's got enzymes in there it'll start breaking down so yeah so let me just show you here i'm going to get my camera set up okay, so i've got my camera kind of set up here on the mandolin slicer but yeah like i said i'm going to make sure my glove on i've been traumatized since i was in high school so yeah so basically i'm just going to take it there is another safety thing so you know make sure that you're using that 
I'm not going to, but you know, you do what you want. So yeah, just quarter inch. Um, I am also going to throw out that stem in, but it is nice to hang on to because then you can get as much out of this as what you, you know, can. So there, so I'm going to throw out this little extra stem in. So yeah, so basically I'm just going to take these and I'm going to then just dump them in my scale here. Till I get close to that two pounds. So that right there was about five ounces. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna pause this video till I get my two pounds and we'll go to the next step, okay? All right guys, so I've got just at two pounds here in this bowl. So basically for each two pound increments, I'm going to add two tablespoons of salt. And this is the canning salt. It seems like, you know, quite a bit of salt, but honestly, once this stuff starts sweating out all the liquid, um, you know, the salt also kind of goes out of the cucumber and we're not adding any more to the recipe. So basically it's just gonna be part of the brine. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and coat these like this. You know, just get them nice and coated. I'm gonna keep the same bowl here to keep doing this for the rest of them. I'm anticipating three of these, but now that I'm getting into it, I'm anticipating two batches at least now. But you know, like with me, I always make sure that I have enough stuff out and ready to do an overestimation because it's better to be over than to be under. Okay, so I got those nice and coated. And then I'm just going to take this colander strainer that I have here, the one that I showed you, and it's sitting in a glass measuring cup, an eight quart one. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and dump those in there like that. And just make sure you get in there. So yeah, so these are gonna start sweating. I'll try to get as much of the excess salt. But yeah, honestly, these are already starting to sweat out. Um, you know, some excess water. So yeah, I'm going to set these then in the refrigerator for three hours. And then guys, I'm going to go ahead and get my next ones ready to see if I get two or three. And then I'll come back and then we'll start working on the brine. So that brine's also going to sit for three hours. So bear with me, okay? All right, guys, so I was actually able to get exactly three batches, so that's two pounds in each. And then I just wanna show you before I set these in the fridge. So these are already letting off some liquid. You can just see them dripping in there. So I'm gonna set these in the fridge for three hours. And then over here, I've got our brine started. So in this brine, I'm gonna go through, I'm just starting to get it to a boil. So I'm gonna go through each ingredient in the brine. So we've got one teaspoon of black peppercorns per recipe so i've got three teaspoons in there we've got one teaspoon of red pepper flake per recipe per recipe or per you know two pound batch so that's three teaspoons one tablespoon uh per batch of the red bell dehydrated pepper so i've got three tablespoons in there two tablespoons per batch of the dried minced onion so i've got six tablespoons one half teaspoons of turmeric per batch. So I've got one and a half teaspoons. One tablespoon per batch of the mustard seed. So I've got three tablespoons. One half teaspoons per recipe of the celery seed. So I have one and a half teaspoons. This we're going to not add the pickle crunch until it's actually ready to jar up. So we'll put um, that in the bottom of the jars and I'll go through that with you because I plan on reusing some store-bought pickle jars and then I'll just go through you like my estimations and stuff of that. So then we've got two and a quarter cup per recipe of sugar. So we've got six and three quarter cups in here. Three cups per recipe or per batch of the white vinegar. Make sure it's 5% acidity. And so that is going to be nine cups. And then we have one cup of water per two pound batch. And that so that is going to be three cups. So I'm just going to wait till this is at a nice boil, which I'll wait here. I'm gonna pause this video and then um, <clears throat> wait till it comes to a boil. And then I'll show you rolling boil and I'm just gonna put it on low and I'm going to go ahead and cover it. And I'm just gonna let it sit like that for three hours until I'm ready to go to the next step. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the refrigerator until they do their thing. And then, yeah, so see, this is just that short amount of time. I mean, literally under 20 minutes. 
they're already starting to get rid of that excess liquid. Okay, guys? So we'll bring this to a boil. I'll show you that. I'll put the lid on it. Three hours in the fridge, and then we'll be back after that. All right, guys. So this is at a nice rolling boil. So I'm just actually going to reduce this heat. Let's see if I do this. I'm going to put it on low. I'm actually just going to put it at like one. So then I've got the heat reduced. I'm just going to stir it a little bit. Make sure I get all my stuff off there. I'm going to get a little plate here just to have a little rest for my spoon because I don't want that in there. And, okay, so one major thing that I want to add. Um, so this red pepper flake actually... This is um, part of the stuff that adds a little bit of the spice to it. When I kind of did some like uh, sampling on this just to see how my spice was, I ended up adding another two tablespoons of this. So in your recipe, depending on how much spice that you want, you know, you could add more or less of this. The peppercorns also add some spice. So I ended up just per each two pound batch, one tablespoon of this. Uh, that's what I had last time and I still... Sometimes when you're doing this stuff, you know, you kind of chicken scratch, like different variations that you make. But yeah, after I got looking at it and, and I sampled some with a spoon, then um, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I added a little bit more spice. So anyways, guys, we're going to let this simmer for three hours with the lid on it. And then we'll be back and we'll go to the next process of getting everything canned guys we got 12 minutes and 48 seconds here on the clock so in the meantime while we're waiting to finish the countdown here for the three hours I've got a big uh, 20 quart stock pot of water here that I've got water in um, I've got just enough water that basically it's gonna cover the jars once I put it in we're gonna this is gonna be a hot water method that we're gonna do and then I've got a trivet at the bottom of this pan which is that thing there with the holes in it. So that way my jars don't uh, hit the bottom and when it's boiling, it won't bounce off the bottom. So the one thing with pickles that you will also need is also like a thermometer. I'm gonna use our smoker thermometer that basically you just stick in the meat. But basically these pickles, we want a hot water bath at about 100 to 185 degrees for 30 minutes. So once this kind of gets up to a boil, I'm going to turn it down and try to achieve that temperature. So um, I'm also going to sterilize my jars in here beforehand. And I also am going to add just a little bit of vinegar. That way, um, as the jars are hot water bathing, they, will, uh, they won't get like a nasty white residue on them from the water. And they'll just come out squeaky clean. I'm actually just adding this apple cider vinegar here. Just a splash, splash of it or whatever else. And then over here, I actually brought my um, brine here to another boil. And then I've just actually turned the heat completely off. That way when our pickles are ready and we're, we're going to start putting them in the jars, this will be extra hot. So like I said, just a quick update. We're bringing this to a boil here. We've got 11 minutes here left on the clock. And then we're going to sterilize our jars, which I've got about 12 of them sitting here. I don't anticipate using them all, but I'll go through the steps here once this water starts boiling and we'll sterilize them and then we'll put the pickle crisp in the bottom. So, okay guys, just uh, bear with me here for a few more minutes and we'll be on to the next step. All right guys, so I have 12 jars here and I've got them washed, but I'm going to go ahead and sterilize them now. So basically what I do is I just take this jar wrench, um, which is used for like tightening hot jars but I actually use it, um, if you've seen my other videos, you'll be familiar, I used to use it to um, sterilize the jars. So I just take it right at the neck and I bring it over here and I just dip it in my hot water, swirl it around and then dump it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all 12 jars and then we're gonna go on to the next step of putting the pickle, the extra pickle crunch in there. All right guys, so I have all these jars sterilized uh, over here, I'm bringing this to a boil again, and then I'm going to take it off. I'm going to take the lid off, and I'm going to set it next to these jars. Over here, I'm going to stick um, this thermometer inside here, and I'm going to let that go ahead and climb. I want to make sure that it's at least between 180, 185 degrees. If it's more than that, um, so yeah, it's actually 185 degrees. So I'm going to start adjusting my temperature down on this 
and I'm just gonna do about four and a half because I don't want it to climb too far over here because by the time I put my lid on I'm actually gonna bring it way down try to maintain the temperature and then bring it back up so we'll just put it down here on close to low and then yes yeah, so we're at 190 like I said I want that 180 185 temperature so anyway, so I'm going to come back over here to my jars and I'm going to add this extra crunch Mrs. Wadge's pickle crisp. Again, this is just calcium chloride. These are pints. So we're going to want an eighth of a teaspoon per jar, which I only have a quarter teaspoon. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and make sure that I get an eighth of a teaspoon. And I'm going to go ahead and do that to every single jar. Um, even if we don't fill all 12 of these, that's completely fine. We basically, like I said, I'd rather have too much than too little. We can always wash these. Um, literally, my jars probably get washed like three times between the whole process, especially if they don't get used. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and fill these. And real quick, and if you get a little too much, no problem. We'll just have extra crunchy pickles. But like I said, I might go ahead and get an eighth of a teaspoon because... You know it's kind of the same you know this stuff is the same for everything so even when I'm making jalapeno peppers and things of that nature I'm still using these so yeah so anyways I'm gonna fill up these jars okay that's done and then okay so I've got my 12 flats here which I'll dip in the hot water before we seal these up I've got 12 rings I've got my jar lifter this black end is the end that we're gonna use to dip the flats into the hot water to sterilize them and then the jar lifter is what we're going to use on the jars. Um, and then I just go ahead and I have a funnel on this. Typically, I like to use a glass measuring cup. But for this, I'm going to use a funnel and I'm actually going to use a ladle to ladle the stuff out. And then I just go, I just have this um, bubble remover slash headspace tool. So, yeah. So, basically, I'm going to pause it here for a minute. We've got this stuff. I'm at 202 degrees. So, yeah, I'm going to put this on low and I want this to climb back down. This is to a bubble or a, a boil. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this. Um, I'm going to take the lid off because I got steam everywhere and it's scalding me. So I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to move this over to where my jars are at. Make sure you don't get a throat full of uh, the brine here. And that's one thing too with this brine. This is going to fill your whole house up. The clothing that you're wearing is going to smell like this. So if you go anywhere while you're canning, you're going to smell like this. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the pickles out here and I'll be right back. Okay. So I went ahead and I pulled my pickles out of the refrigerator. I want to show you all the liquid that is in the bottom of this bowl. And basically what I do is I just go ahead and I just give them a little bit of a shake. Um, make sure your hands are clean. Obviously you always want clean hands when you're doing any of this stuff. Um, basically too, you can even grab these cucumbers and just feel them and they're so much more firm than when I was cutting them up. I also just like to take a clean paper towel and just kind of go over them, get anything extra, but basically that's all that you do. And so basically we're just going to go ahead and we're going to start filling each one of these jars as many as we can. My canner I believe holds eight jars. So I'm going to only fill the amount that'll fit in my canner at a time. And then we'll go ahead and do two batches if we if need be. But I'd much rather have the brine put in later and added later before I start canning than I would too soon. So yeah, we want to pack them down really well. But not too crazy because like I said, I want them packed down well. But I still want to make sure that I have plenty of room for my brine. And I've got plenty of brine. I'll probably have some left over, but that is totally fine. So yeah, I do believe we're gonna get about four, or yeah, four jars per thing. And if we have to rob some from another jar, I would much rather have that. Slip of the hand here. So, well, about three and a half here, and I'm not, I'm gonna make sure that I fill them up pretty well. 
So, okay. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to go ahead and fill up at least another um, two pounds with my stuff. And then um, we'll go ahead and add the brine, okay? Okay, guys. So I actually got 10 jars full. I've got two extra ones here in the back that I'm just going to go ahead and put in the sink. Uh, the big thing is with the calcium chloride is um, sometimes if your bottom's really, really dry, it'll kind of stick stick to it. It'll be harder to get out. So I'm actually only going to put the brine in five of these jars because I'm going to process five jars at a time. So if you want, you can go ahead and put the other five in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. If not, no problem. I'm just going to go ahead and leave them out. But here I'm going to basically take my canning funnel and then I'm going to go ahead with my brine. I've got my ladle here. Um, make sure you can see that. So I've got my ladle and I'm just stirring this brine up really, really good. So every time before I go ahead and put a scoop of the brine in, I'm going to give it a stir because I want all those seasonings to fill up the best that they can or blend up the best that they can. And that way I can just have the most well-balanced, beautiful brine here. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave about a half an inch of head space. And if I need more, I will add more. But like I said, we're only gonna do five jars at a time here. And I'm eyeballing my temperature. I'm about 187, so that's perfect over there. Like I said, I hope you guys have a meat thermometer and you don't have to go and buy one. Um, but you know, you can use a candy thermometer as well. Basically what I would do would just be like put it on a piece of twine and just uh, keep it right above the water, you know, to where the head's not covered. And those you can get, you know, anywhere at the dollar store, anywhere should have them, any hardware store. So yeah, this is, you know, Definitely, I love the pickles. So when I first made them, I used apple cider vinegar, and I just kind of decided against that because they were already dark enough with the turmeric and everything else. But yeah, so yeah, you just go ahead and fill these up. And yes, this is going to be sticky, and I'm trying to be as neat as I can, but, you know, this brine is just, you're just going to get it places. It's not a big deal. But yeah, I'm trying to be as neat as possible. And like I said, we'll come back in and we'll fill this up here. But yes, the biggest thing is making sure that every time you, uh, can you guys see those jars? Aren't they starting to look so pretty? So yeah, once I fill up this fifth one, we'll go ahead and knock the air bubbles out and we'll go ahead and top them off, okay? Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this funnel over here in my little jar. And then we're going to take this air, this headspace tool. We're just going to knock all those air bubbles out. Try to be, I try to go like this. Um, you can also use the other end. That's no problem. I'm just trying not to poke at the pickles and leave holes in them. You know, and obviously these are not 100% the recipe of Famous Dave's, but they're pretty darn close. You know, for homemade pickles... I do not have one single complaint. My husband likes them, so that is the main thing. And Famous Dave's, just they have stellar pickles, and I love them a lot. But obviously, you know, I want to be as self-sufficient as possible. Okay, so these two pickle, these two jars here, I know you can't see the one, are, um, they're pretty darn good to be in a half an inch. Let me find my one. I want up here to get in my cupboard. Oh, what the hell? I have a little, oh, of course, right there at the bottom. I have a little cute, I collect Pyrex Crazy Daisy. Um, so I have a super little cute pour here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of the brine in that and then just try to pour it out of there. Try not to make too much of a mess. Okay, so yes, I'm going to take it. I want a half inch head space. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour until I reach that in each of these last ones. Now the biggest thing on this guys is going to make sure that you wipe the rim and perfect. So yes, we got perfect space here. I'm going to get another pool out. I'm going to set that in. 
We're just gonna leave our brine here, that's not a problem. I'm gonna set my label over here and my headspace tool. That way it's not just stewing in there. Okay, so the next step is we're going to get a wet paper towel and we're gonna go ahead and wipe the rims. Okay, I'm at 182 over here on my temperature, so I am just gonna start climbing. For my oven, I'm at usually at like 2.8 on my burner, but I have one of those burners that you can choose a side. So if I use that one, sometimes it just depends because that thing has a mind of its own. To me, it's like, what the hell's the point? Just make them each two giant burners, but whatever. You know, back in the old, back in the day, you know, you could just get a stove. Before, they always had two big burners in the front and one in the back and always worked just fine. So I don't know. They always got to change stuff sometimes, <laughs> it seems like. Um, okay, so I'm just going to make sure that these are nice and clean. Okay, so I sometimes I use the pickle jars that I get at the recycling center that were already pickle jars because they're great. Those are awesome for like pickle spears and stuff. I only just had a couple in the basement and I'm planning on doing some pickle spears exactly like this recipe except for I'm just going to cut them into spears. Uh, so I decided not to use them just because these are bread and butter chips so they're super easy to get out. But anyways... So those, those lids are great and will always seal when it comes to um, cooking them for like 100 and, or 180 to 185 degrees. But I have these one piece lids that I love because you know, as you're always opening these up, it's nice to have the one piece lid, but sometimes those don't want to seal because they're super, super thick. Um, so anyways, if you, you, I'm gonna use the two piece lids and I'm gonna take these five flats right now and I'm gonna sterilize them and put them on the jars. But, uh, Anyways, Ball has the awesome lid that you can get basically for when you um, open up a canned good, like a jelly or something, and then you can just put this plastic lid on it. So those are awesome. So if you guys um, aren't using the store-bought lids to where you have the one-piece lid and these two-piece lids are driving you crazy as you're getting in and out of the fridge, not a problem. You can pick those up super cheap. They come in six packs and they are great. I've got 12 of each of them around. I also have some wide mouth jars that are the one cup jars that I love to make like cold pies with like the crust and stuff in and then I'll use those lids on them. So they work out great. Okay, so anyway, so I got my flat sterilized here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my rings on. So you just wanna put these on tight. Not Do not crank them on. There should be no reason when you're doing canned goods why, um, you have to like literally wrench on these to get them off like when you're done with them. So basically, yeah, you just want them a good hand tightening and after these have cooled or they, or after these have come out of the canner and they're, um, the lids kind of seem like they're loose, but do not tighten those anymore. That's where you get basically two to where they're really wrenched on there. Okay, so basically with this, I kind of like to give these just like a good little shimmy and a shake i mean basically these aren't canned yet these aren't too crazy hot uh obviously we're canning them at super low so it's not burning my fingers so yeah i just like to shake around all that prettiness look at that isn't it pretty so yeah i i mean my color on my jars are just a little bit darker than the famous dave ones and i don't know if it's from the turmeric or what doesn't bother me they taste excellent um, you know, like I said, they're not 100% famous days, but they're good enough for me. So anyway, so I've got the lids on here and I'm just going to go ahead and take my jar lifter and I'm just going to put each one of these into the canner and then we'll go ahead and put the lid on it. So yeah, I got to run this canner twice, but it is what it is. If I would have had more cucumbers, I would have done a bigger batch and maybe had it completely full when we were running it twice. But you know, the key to canning is you gotta get stuff done while it's ready to get done. So sometimes you just have to make do. Okay, so basically with this then, I've got all my jars covered at least a couple inches. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on. I've got my thermometer here, which is fine. My temperature went up down to like 175, but basically with the lid on it, it's going to, um, it's going to get even hotter in there because obviously nothing's escaping. 
So basically I wanna get this back up to at least 180 and then I'll go ahead and put the timer for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and wait till that happens. Uh, you may even wanna just progress it along. I might even go back up to four and a half because I got stuff to do. So <laughs> yeah, but in the meantime here, like I said, we've got these other five that are just waiting for the brine. I will stick this brine back on the stove and make sure that it is boiling before I bring it back over here once that's done. But yeah, once these get temperature, um, like I said, it's coming back down, but we'll bring it back up to at least 180. We're gonna put them on for, uh, so it's coming back up now, but we're gonna put them on for 30 minutes. So this is kind of in a way like wash, uh, you know, messing with the old pressure canners with the weighted gauges and stuff you know, to where you have to uh, make sure that it's in the right temperature space as far as pounds of pressures and stuff, but just not quite as scary. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna come back once we uh, hit the right temperature. All right, guys, we are at 180 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this timer for 30 minutes. And I'm going to monitor and make sure it stays between 180 and 185 degrees. And basically, yeah, so I will be back uh, once the second batch actually is done and then I'll pull the second batch out for you and you can see the finished product. It's real quick why everything is uh, processing in the hot water bath. So here are these one piece lids that I was telling you about. They are leak proof. Uh, they're made by a ball. Uh, they've got this little lip in there that makes them to where they're leak proof. This is a wide mouth. This one is actually quite a few years old. I would say at least probably six or seven. This is like one of the original ones that they came out with. It is actually not leak proof. This is a regular mouth one. I still use it uh, like basically for jellies and things of that nature. But yeah, these are super great. Uh, you know, like I said, for when you've got pickles and things like that to where you don't have to keep dicking with the two piece lids. Also, if you need to use the ring for something, then you have an extra ring and it's not on, you know, canned goods that are in your refrigerator. Also, my other thing I wanted to reiterate was earlier in the recipe was the red pepper flake. I ended up instead of a teaspoon, I use a tablespoon per two pound batch. So I know I said that, I know I'm repeating myself, but you know, sometimes if you're someone that just likes to skim through the video, you know, I just wanted to make sure that you didn't miss that. I mean, this just, uh, it's not overly spicy doing it, but it definitely just didn't have enough spice in it. And like I said, when I first did the recipe, I obviously was trying to like put what I thought was in the recipe and then gauge it to taste. And I had originally one teaspoon of uh, the red pepper flake and one teaspoon of the black peppercorns. And I just decided it needed more of that. So anyways, I'll be back once we get everything processed. All right, guys, I got five seconds on the clock here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my lid. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that annoying ding jingling. And then, um, I'm gonna take out my thermometer here. This did get a little hot, I even ran it on low, um, but I mean, it was up to like 194 part of the time there at the very end. So, I mean, it is what it is. Anyway, so I'm gonna take these out. I'm just gonna take my jar lifter there and grab them like I put them in. And here I've got my other five that I did. Just want to grab them so this isn't as hot as what it usually is obviously when you're hot water bathing usually when you're hot water bathing you want it on the highest setting that you can get and you want it to be like a really really rolling boil um oh my god i didn't break that there carefully don't hit the side of your pot there <laughs> all right just got a couple more to get out so the main thing is as soon as you get them all out you want to take like a dry paper towel or a kitchen towel and you just wanna get the water off the top of them because otherwise it'll dry on there, may leave a little bit of a water droplet residue there. So I'm just drying the top and there I have it. I've got 10 pints of pickles. So it was just at six pounds of pickles and I literally used uh, just enough of my brine. I only had just a little bit left, so it was perfect. And see how beautiful these jars are? Um, you know, as these cool down, this first batch is a little bit cooler than the ones that I just took out. So these will start settling to the bottom. And once they're completely cooled, I'd give them about 12 hours. Um, then you can uh, go ahead and mix them around a little bit better if you want. And I have some of them Actually, none of them have sealed yet, and it's been at least a half hour since I took the other ones out. So that is the one thing about, you know, cooking these on a really, really low heat. 
Um, you know, the pickles are in a brine, so really basically we're just sealing them. We're trying not to overcook them on that low heat so that way they don't get mushy. So if you do have any that do not seal, just go ahead and put those in the refrigerator and use them as fast as you can. I mean, I'm almost guaranteeing all of these will seal. It just takes a little bit longer than what it would if you're actually hot water bathing on a higher heat. So don't get worried about it. It just is what it is. Um, if they don't seal, go ahead and put them in the fridge. So here they are, our beautiful copycat, famous Dave, spicy bread and butter pickles. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video, I would surely appreciate it. Thanks.